If you're into sports, and particularly sports journalism, then you'll probably have heard of The Athletic, the subscription sports website that offers unrivaled thought pieces. But how did they get their vulture reputation, and how has a four-year-old company managed to knock old heavyweights off their perch so swiftly? Here's how it happened. Founded by Alex Mather and Adam Hansman, who formerly worked together at the fitness app Strava, The Athletic is a four-year-old subscription sports website famous for its aggressive approach to business and for producing articles that are more intimate, detailed, and offer more than just your usual post-match report. Launching in Chicago in January 2016, The Athletic focused initially on American sports, such as hockey, basketball, and American football. According to the founders, The Athletic's ambition is to be the local sports page for every city in the country, and the goal of The Athletic was to produce more detailed, impactful articles rather than traditional match reports that most sports media websites and newspapers don't have the time to produce because they're so focused on what happened yesterday. The idea was simple, to move into a city, have writers obsess over the local teams across all sports, and convince those fans to pay $60 a year. Everyone they spoke to, including CEOs of media companies, said, this is the dumbest idea ever. But try telling that to an entrepreneur. Having said that, it might have put them off, especially when neither of them had any experience running a journalism or media company. The Athletic hopes to pounce on an industry on a downward trajectory, and as financial stress cripples journalism, many writers are looking to explore alternatives, especially those who haven't seen a pay rise in years. The Athletic initially projected careful and steady growth, launching their second and third local sites in Toronto and Cleveland nine months and 14 months after launch. But in the summer of 2017, after mass layoffs at a number of US sporting establishments, those plans were thrown up in the air as a wide range of skilled workers were all of a sudden readily available. After raising in excess of $8 million of venture capital, they were able to seize on what they described as a one-of-a-kind moment in sports journalism. And the success of the sites was evident, with The Athletic covering over 50 cities in the USA and Canada, and with a 90% retention rate, and at $60 or £60 a year, it's the same as buying a ticket to go and see your team play live. A key part of the success was offering inflated compensation to the best writers in the industry, a bit like what PSG did with its footballers. Mather is known for saying in the New York Times, we will wait every local paper out and let them continuously bleed until we are the last ones standing. We will suck them dry of their best talent at every moment, and we will make business extremely difficult for them. By the summer of 2019, The Athletic crossed the pond to launch in the UK with a similar approach, hiring up the best and brightest writers in the UK who obsess over their local clubs and bring with them an army of fans. But their British expansion actually came earlier than originally planned, with the founders being approached by Ed Malian, the sports editor of The Independent, who offered to help launch the site in the UK and had a preference for quality pieces rather than the usual heavy and boring match reports. Flying out to the USA to pitch his plans of club-by-club -club coverage rather than city-by-city, city, he was made Managing Director of UK Operations. Some of their other catches include the London Times Chief Football Correspondent Oliver Kay, BBC Sports News Correspondent David Ornstein, and The Guardian Chief Football Writer Daniel Taylor, among a whole host of others. The hope is that these big names will encourage readers to make the switch, and to cause a stir to the old guard. As the new recruits joined, the rumour mill started to spin, but this time reporting about the crazy salaries being offered to these writers, with some rumoured to be earning anywhere from seventy to £350,000. The silly money had switched from footballers to the football writers. Whilst the salaries are impressive, the writers will have their work cut out to earn them. With The Athletic able to see how many people subscribe through the writer's stories, or where they stop reading, or whether they rate the article as meh or awesome, showing their monetary value to the firm. Whilst most sports media are centred around the top six clubs in the Premier League, The Athletic wants to also target the smaller clubs whose fans often go underserved, with only 1,500 sign-ups required to pay the wages of the star writer for that club. The Athletic's writers are encouraged therefore to produce quality content, with some travelling around the world like Adam Crafton who travelled to Argentina to meet the family and friends of Emiliano Sala. Alan Shearer has now been signed up as the firm hit their millionth subscriber, apparently enough to hit $60 million in revenue, to interview some of the game's greatest players and add some gravitas to the already popular group of writers. But what's next for The Athletic? 
Well, in order to continue to compete for a slice of your attention on a daily basis, the business is already exploring podcasts. Given that, according to Malian, they attract advertisers who are throwing money at podcasts without really even thinking about it. They're known for acquiring the popular YouTube channel Tifo Football, along with their podcast too. The founders are still keen to steer clear of advertising, suggesting that it's not aligned with quality as it serves sponsors rather than the users. But despite the rapid growth, the aggressive hiring plan, and inflating wages, some people still think the business might fall flat. I mean, they're not exactly reinventing the wheel with paid-for journalism. Their bullish strategy has made them look the best, but they'll now need to follow up with quality content keeping their audience engaged. As The Athletic flips journalism on its head, they're finally paying writers what they're worth to write the best content, moving away from clickbait articles and fake transfer rumours to build a long-term quality product that will add value to the world of sport. Whilst much of the industry fears that their best writers may be stolen, The Athletic's investors see the value in a declining industry, with the company raising in excess of $70 million, with a valuation of over $500 million, it may have a long way to go yet. But according to the founder of Bedrock Capital, Eric Stromberg, who have invested in The Athletic, as an investor, you think about what is the lifetime value of a customer. And sports is this anomaly market where the lifetime value of a sports fan is their entire life. Thanks for watching.